after these talks, uh, I can just add some personal view of what we see. Because I think that uh, you, you, you will see few zero bias peaks, and it's quite boring after a while. Um, this is sort of, a, a, for us, a, a it was sort of, for, for the people that are here, it was sort of like a serendipitous way to, to reach this work because I think a year and a half ago I heard about marijuana, but I, I had nothing really, I didn't ever think that I'll ever work on this subject. Uh, so, so, so why, why did we decide at all to enter the field? Uh, well, uh, in this particular time, which was about, I think, a year plus ago, uh, we had suddenly had very good Indian mouse nut wires, which are homegrown by a Dutch trickman. As the picture was before. These were mostly Indian mouse nut wires. And then, at the same time, we looked at these similar structures, and you will see in a second that we looked for entanglement of electrons coming out of Cooper pairs. And, and uh, the second, the other thing, I'm working in my Urana field a long time, unfortunately. I'm working with five halves. And as I mentioned in a second, with, in a way, nice, but also disappointing results. And this was another opportunity to have quasi-particles with this behavior, so maybe we can have a crack at this. So, so these are sort of the wires that we got now, and the wires that are being grown by MBE, and they are quite high purity, but as I'll show you an example of the conductance later, that it's not very nice. And this, I think, one of the main problems of observing and believing many of the features that we see. Uh, for example, we learned, or does learn, how to get rid of this stacking fault when you move from voltzite to zinc blend wires, okay? So, so the wires that, that we walk today do not seem to have this stacking fault or twins between them. And the problem basically in these wires that, which is also good, that the 2D gas on the surface is on the surface. So we can really contact them very, very easily. Okay? Uh, and they possess all this presumably G factor and spin orbit, but, but because the electrons are on the surface, then they are very sensitive to impurities that are sitting on the surface, and it's very, very difficult to eliminate them. And what we spend really the last few months is trying to clean the system rather than to look tomorrow for another Majorana pick. Okay, now, and, and I mentioned to you now, we worked with, with, with entanglement, and the reason I show you, because the device that I'll show you that we use is very similar to the device that we presently, at the time, had. And the idea has, is to take a Cooper pair and have, rather than cross, rather than drive reflection on each side, to have crossed and drive reflection. And, and, and the motivation came from many papers by Daniel Loss and Thierry Martin, and, and I think that, Schonenberger made a nice, beautiful experiment, and what we wanted to do is pretty much repeat his experiment, and rather than measure conductance, measure cross-correlation. So we should have from, from a pair, a click on the right and a click on the left at the same time, by measuring cross-correlation of shot noise, and that's, and that's exactly what we did, and the idea was that you eliminate, eliminate the Cooper pair by quantum dot on both sides, and you should have only entangled electrons. Now, I'm showing this picture, and, and you will see this picture again, because this is the same or a bit modified structure that we use for looking for this zero bias peak. Okay, so, so again, the, the last bullet there, the disappointment for five halves, you know, or many of you know, that the five halves is, is also, it has a gap, and it has Rxx equals zero, so how can it be? You know, how can something like this happen? So it can happen by, by this proposed, you know, move with, st move with state, that we should have the composite fermions, and I'm not going to elaborate on it, I don't have any time, but the composite fermion, which are spinless, all the spins are up, they condense to a superconductor, P wave. Okay, so this was already proposed in 1990, long ago, and you should have a Majorana sitting localized here, and Majorana sitting on the, going around. Okay, so it's a much more interesting system, I think, but to prove that you do have it, you have to do interference, and this is difficult. And what happened, that so far we failed to observe interference. So the issue of this Majorana came up sort of in the right time. Okay, we had the wires, we had a system that looked like what we need to measure this zero bias peak, and the five halves, which we are presently working on it, is tough, difficult. Okay. So 
why enter this field? I think that it, uh, the, the beautiful part there, that it have all this superconductivity, and spin orbit, and magnetic field, and one dimension. And superconductor, I personally didn't work for ever. Okay, so this was for me an opportunity to learn about superconductivity. And of course, in, in 2010, these two papers suggested one can do in these wires, okay? And I must admit that, that the work that Leo, this pioneering work that he did also, you know, was very, very motivating uh, uh, to, to go into this field. Okay. So, so what are we looking for? We're looking for, okay, all these four or five groups, whatever, for this conductance peak that is stuck to zero chemical potential, to the Fermi energy, basically. Okay. And, and, and that's what I'll show you, okay? I'll show you in, in a bit different system. Now, what, what, I, what I think that it's nice, even though Sankar and even Leo repeated it, explain how the marijuana pops up, I think it's, it's a very cute explanation that I like to use as, as basically uh, an Andrei bound state. That's all. Okay, so if you look now uh, on the P wave, and that I learned it from Carlo Pinecker, from Pete, uh, and other people also, uh, if you have this, 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 this P wave sitting here induced by the S wave, uh, and, then, and then you look for an Andrea pound state for some barrier, which is the end of the wire, okay? And then I'll take the end of the wire and push it over all the way here. But if you have it here, then, then the, uh, when, when, when the electron comes here, it reflects as a hole, okay? It gets a pi phase at the end, right? It has to go to zero. And in P wave, it gets also a pi, a pi wave upon reflection. So you have a pi and pi, and then you don't need, and this and this could be at zero energy, canceling each other. The K and minus K will cancel each other. So if you now move this, this, this end of the wire all the way closer and closer and closer, it will be stuck to zero. This is different from the S wave, that it's, it's pi here because it's the end, and it's zero here. So you have to accumulate another pi, but the K of electron and the minus K of the hole to get, to get this extra pi. And if you push it closer and closer together, this 200 rev state will be pushed out, 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 out there. So that basically, I think, is a very cute experiment to understand that the Majorana basically is an Andreev zero bias peak in a P wave. That's all. Okay. So now that's, that's the picture you, you've seen, and you will see it again in the next few talks also. So, so but you know, we want to take a P wave superconductor induced by this, this is the Kitayev model, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and, then, and then you want to put the Fermi energy inside the gap, this gap that you open up with the Zeeman, with the Zeeman okay? And then you hopefully will get two localized states here. Okay, so, so just to repeat again, these energy gaps. Okay, so there are two energy gaps. There is one at k equals zero, and there are another gap on both sides at kf and minus kf. And what happens is that if you, if you increase the, the Zeeman, you close, first of all, you start with the S-wave, and you close it, okay? You have this induced gap, and you kill this induced gap by magnetic field, okay? And here, the gap get, gets to zero, and then you reopen it again as a topological gap, okay? And this is the trivial part, and this is the topological part. And this one is usually on the other side, okay? Depending strong on the spin orbit, okay? And you will see that it affects the robustness of the peak. I'll show you a little bit later. It's, it's okay? I'm making noise here. And, 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 um, and, and, and the gap itself, which is the smallest gap of the K0 and KF, and that basically is the gap. Okay, and this is the, the, the expression here. And I can vary it, you can see, by affecting the magnetic field, the Zeeman, or I can change it by changing the chemical potential with a gate under the superconductor. Okay, so what are we looking for? Okay, zero bias peak at a finite magnetic field, closing the gap, if you can see it, this, this induced, induced gap that you want to close, and possibly if you can split it. Okay? Now, that depends on, on, on the direction of, of the Zeeman and the temperature we see also, but just since I was allotted 15 minutes, then we see similar things to what, what Leo does, so I won't show it. So that's basically the device, okay? the same device as we use for Cooper pair splitting. Okay? And just remind you what, what, what we are expected to see. So first you start with the induced gap. The induced gap in the indium arsenide it depends on the transmission between the superconductor and the wire. If the barrier is very, very large, the induced gap will be small. If the barrier is small, the induced gap will be large. And you really have to play with it, because if you make an, a, an intimate contact, 
and the gap, induced gap is very, very large, you won't be able to deplete the wire underneath. You won't be able to change the chemical potential because it'll be flooded with electrons. It will be almost like a metal. So the, the, the game is to have, to have a barrier which you can still have a reasonably induced gap, but at the same time, you can also change the density under the superconductor metal. Okay, so if I, change, if I now change the magnetic field, this induced gap goes down, okay? Now the Zeeman goes up, and for chemical potential, mu equals zero in this equation before, then when they cross it, okay, then the gap, okay, the gap will close, okay, the, the, the gap will close, and at this point it will be open, and boom, possibly we'll have this, this marijuana peak appearing. <laughs> Okay, so the first experiment we started looked like this, or on a device like this. So, so you see that you have, this is a normal metal, this is a global gate, it can change the density everywhere, okay? This is the superconductor, and when we did it initially, it was sitting here on a pedestal, a metallic pedestal. At the time, we didn't think even about uh, Majorana, we didn't think about changing the chemical potential. And indeed, here you can see that one cannot, by changing the voltage here, this is stuck. You cannot change the chemical potential underneath because this gold pedestal screens the gate from the wire. Okay, so indeed, what we've seen all the time, which was, in retrospect, nice, right? We never see any peak. So you see something, the, the induced gap, this is aluminum, if I didn't mention it before, the gaps are much smaller here. This is the aluminum gap itself, okay? And that's the induced gap. But whatever you see, we see how the, we kill the aluminum itself with a, with a magnetic field along the wire. But this blue one suggests that there is no any zero bias peak. Playing, 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 we didn't have any zero bias peak. Luckily enough, we had a system that looked like this also without the pedestal underneath, okay? didn't plan about it before, it just happened that we had it, okay? So now here is the dimension, okay, the, the wire is quite short, okay? And these are the two, the two right and left get, uh, 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 gates, and what you do, you start really with a wire which is, which is depleted, I mean the carrier density is very, very small, the wire is only 50 nanometer or so, okay? And we also, by making short noise measurement, which I really don't have time to show, the number of challenge in the bare wire is about one, okay? Approximately one, because the wire is very, very small diameter. The, the number of channels under the aluminum, I don't know, okay? So when we, when we induce here something that looks like a quantum dot here, okay, we come down, and this is my effective barrier at the end of this wire, and these two green one supposed to be the end of the topological wire, of the P-wave superconductor. Okay, so here is immediately I show you the experiment. I jump right away to the result and then I make some cuts through it. Okay, so what you see here, this is the v voltage, source drain voltage. That's the conductance here. Okay, and what you can see here, you see here something that looks like a gap closing. And then you, have here, you see here a peak and you see opening up again. Okay, and this is a, a simulation done by Yuval Oreg and, and his student, Jonathan. Uh, uh, that, that basically looked on some reasonable parameter and, and matched it, okay? But this, you know, you can always play this parameter and get whatever you want, okay? So this is not a proof. But in general, it, it looks okay, and then, uh, and then the parameter here looks also reasonably okay. So now, basically, let me just, just tell you what we, ex what we expect to see. Okay, so, so the, uh, the coherence length of, of, of this state here, okay, it's, it's the, only g the only energy here is, is gap. The gap, okay, the EG. That's the Fermi velocity, okay? So this coherence length is inversely proportional to the gap, and the gap looks like this, okay? So, th so here is the story. We start with chemical potential around zero, okay? And then suppose we sit here at the maximum gap, okay? If the gap is very large, these are the number, then the coherence length is quite small, and I would plot it this way, and there is no overlap, and I would expect a peak from here to here through this, and a peak from here to here through this, and there is no coupling between them, so I expect to get a zero energy peak. If now I change now the magnetic field, okay, and I go to smaller gap, okay, these are these two, this is 30 millitesla, 80 millitesla, the coherence length, one over e, which is bigger, and then there is some overlap, and I expect to see some splitting. Okay, that's the splitting here. Okay, so here is, here is again the conductance I showed you before in this, in this color picture, and I'm starting changing the magnetic field, 
okay? And I move along at the same time with my gap, okay? So I close the gap up to here. I'll, 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 I'll add you some guidance to the eye, okay? Which may be forbidden, but I'll show you anyhow. And then you see a peak, okay? And then later on, you might see another one, a splitting of the peak, which is showing the color picture. And if I help you by guiding it, so that's what we think is the gap closing. Here is the, the peak, and it splits up again, as expected. Now, you can change also the, 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 the size of, the, of, the, of the, the coherence level of the marine by changing the chemical potential also. Okay? So the story is very similar. This is, again, the equation. And by moving mu up and down here, at the same time, you shrink the gap. It's not a fixed gap that you move mu inside, because you can see that the gap is affected by mu. You can close the gap by moving the, gap, the, the chemical potential up. And the same story occurs. So at mu equals 0, you might get non-overlap of, of the two wave function. And at small and large mu, you will get an overlap. OK, so, so here is, again, this is now, we change now the chemical potential, OK? And this is mu equals 0 that I showed you before, this part I showed you before. Now the peak is really black and not white here. I'm sorry for the mix-up. And then if I change, for example, if I change mu, OK, then what I see here, that you see something that goes up. And if you don't believe me, if this is not very clear, it's split, 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 split all the time. And I think a color picture could show it much nicer. OK, so now we have a split peak. You have a closing of the gap. But the gap really, the, it, you never see a, a, a peak, a single peak, because the gap is small all the time, because the chemical potential is very high. So that basically is the res are the results. That's the result I want to show you. And if you now look on changing the chemical potential, changing B, and I plot here the existence of a single peak is green, and the split peak is blue, so you think is, as like Leo stressed before, there is a nice space that the peak is stuck to zero. Okay? And this is, again, the simulation that really proposed this is affected more by the gap on PF, and this side is affected more by the gap at K equals zero. Okay? So that's, that's the point here. So now, however, finish soon, two minutes? Okay? One minute. Well, OK. <laughs> uh, we have a tough chairman now. Uh, OK, so first, I would think that when you start making this experiment without at all superconductor, etc., you should have the so-called helical gap. You should have helical behavior. Namely, you remember this picture that you, you, you have spin orbit splitting. You open a gap at the center. The chemical potential should move. You should have two is coverage, is coverage, two is coverage. We never see it to begin with. That's, I think, the first requirement, because, as I'll show you in a second, the wires are very uh, uh, um, non-monotonic. The conductance is, the transconductance is very non-monotonic. The other thing is the peak height is, is small. It's somewhere between 0.1 and 0.4. Uh, this can be explained. Uh, uh, in, in general, one can say that we put a barrier because we want to suppress Cooper pair. Okay? But if you put a barrier and want to suspend the Cooper pair, then we have a long lifetime of the Majorana peak. It's very, very sharp. And if it's sharp, then like in a quantum dot, the peak will be suppressed by, by the inverse time. You know? This will be very, the time is very long, so the gamma is very long, over T. And the temperature in our fridge is, is small. You know? I think that the, tem the temperature, I know it's about 10 millikelvin, but the wire probably sits at 20 or 30 millikelvin, and that's probably too high. Okay, we have to go probably to much, much smaller to get the peak high, if the temperature really is the reason for the suppression of the peak. The other thing is that we see this splitting, but we don't see any, any change, any, any periodicity, KF periodicity, when we change the chemical potential. Right? KF changes, the periodicity should change, uh, and, but I think Charlie at the end has some periodicity inside. We do not see the periodicity. Okay, so... so I'll finish by saying that our structure are far from ideal. I'm talking about our structure. Our indium arsenal structure are far from ideal. And you can see, for example, that the disorder, even though this looks like two plateaus, OK, but they're not in, in 2D gas, I would kill myself. You know? so, so this is really bad. Uh, uh, I don't know the number of the channels under the wire themselves, but what we are trying to do now, if you indeed put a, a high magnetic field on the system, it cleans up. But I don't want it. I want to get a nice, clean, 
conductance plateaus, you know, it's supposed to be one dimensional wire, but we don't see it. Okay, so I don't know, I don't know what is a smoking gun. I, uh, there are many smoking guns maybe, but I think what we have to do, we just have to go ahead and keep collecting data. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> We may have time for a quick question or two, but really quick and important. There you go. Uh, you show, you, you show data, and when this uh, curtain gap, when you see the peak, but from uh, your CV, you, you should also see, when, when the zero, uh, zero bias peak, you need to see splitting also, also open up the gap. You see the picture? No, I don't see reopening of the gap. I see only gap closing, a peak appearing split or not split, but I don't see reopening of the gap. Okay. I don't. No.